בוקר טוב, שבוע טוב. We're up to Chav Zayin Amit Beis, but we'll look at the last line on Chav Zayin Amit Aleph. Boy, Ravashi. Now, until now, what we established were two facts, two basic rules. Number one, the Rabbanan said that a Shvuya who was taken captive by the Goyim is assumed to have been unfortunately raped, and therefore she's a zona that tzul kuhuna. Point number two, if there's something called the machboa, where if let's say the goyim come and they take over a, you know, the town and they bring out all the women and so forth into captivity, if, if there's a machboa, that's a private cave or a hiding place, then if we assume for whatever reason we have Edus, that she hid herself in the machboa, then the normal din of Shvuya as being Tmea le Kohanim does not apply. Boy Rav Ashi. So we're talking about a, a, a place, a city, let's say a city in Israel, the Goyim took over, but there's a machboa. The Umra, and one woman comes forward to testify about herself. Lo Nichbesi, I have to admit that I was not in the machboa, in this private cave, but velonit mesi. But even though I was taken captive by the goyim, I was not touched. Mao, do we believe her? Ni shall we say that in this case she has a migu, and here we're going to turn to Dafchav Zainam and Beis. The other phrase for amigu, which is identical, is called ma lila shaker. If she wanted a lie, then she could have just said, nichbesi, I hid in this machboa. And the law is that if a woman hid in a machboa, then she's not a shruya, and she's tahora. Here, she went ahead and admitted that she didn't make it into the machboa. And she was taken captive, but she says that she was Tahora, she was not Nitma. So she has a very good Migu. So shall we say, let's rely on her Migu. And even though a Shvuya is assumed to have been raped, this is going to be the exception. We're going to rely on her own testimony to be Mitaira herself, simply because she has a Migu. Oh, Dilma, what's the other Tzad? of Rav Ashi Sofik, and that is Lo Amrinon, we will not accept and rely upon her Mali Lashakar Hamigu as credibility, as giving her Nemmanus. Why? And this is explained by one of the Rishonim, Rabbeinu Kraskas, that this is called a Migu Keneged Edith otherwise known as an Anan Sad, we are absolutely sure that if indeed she was taken captive, then she became Tmeo. And even though she's saying that she did not become Tmeo, become Tmeo, and she has a Migu to support her claim and indicate that she's telling the truth, but it's against the Anan Sad. And Migu is not powerful enough to overcome an Anan Sad. So the Gemara immediately raises the following question. Why is it different than the case of a certain person who has a Migu and Rav, as we'll soon see, relied on that Migu even against an Anan Sad. The Adrele Chamrod Lechavre, let's say Ruvain owns a donkey, and he rents it out to Shimon, the Amale, and he tells Shimon with a pointed finger, he warns it, Lotezil, don't take this donkey, Li Archa, on the road that borders on Nahar Pakot, on a, mir- a river in Bavel, which is called Pakot, because if you take the animal close to the river edge, the animal may fall in and die. Deika Maya, because of the water of Nahar Pakot, and the Hamar might die 
if you take it that way, and that's the only route that I forbid you to go on. However, I will allow you, says the Maskir to the Socher, Zil bi Archa de Noresh, another river where apparently Leka Maya, the, the river has already dried up. So even though you're taking it on a route that borders on a river called, Na, called Naraj, but nevertheless, that's fine. What did he do? Now we're talking about the, uh, the Socher. Azal Iu bi Archa Dinar He went down that pathway that borders on the harp code. And as you would guess it, umis chamra. So in other words, the soker violated the will of the owner of the chamar, and indeed the animal dies. Also the kami de rova, the case came in front of rova, and the soker says to rova the following, omar lay in, I have to admit, the Orcha Dinar Pakodasi. I did go, I'm a bad boy, you know, give me patch, alongside this dangerous place for the Chamor. Miu, however, Lohava Maya, the river had dried up. And the animal died for another reason, another cause, old age. It was not because I violated the terms of the agreement. Amalei, Rav, it says we're going to believe him. And why is that? Why do we believe him to say that the Nahar code dried up and the animal died of old age? Because he has a Mali Lushaka, he has a Migu. Iboy Amalei, he could have told us, we have no independent evidence of the fact that he had violated the terms of agreement and taken the animal there, he could have easily said to us, the Archa de Narash has to. And Arch and Nar, Nar, Narash had dried up and he had perfect rishus to allow, allow him to take the animal there. And therefore, that's a proof that he's not lying. If he wants to be a liar, then he has an easy lie in front of him. He could just say, I did exactly what the Maskir said, and I took it down at Narash. Normally, Abai, Abai turns to Rob and he says, okay, fine, he has a Mali Lushaka. So what? Mali Lushaka b'mokom edim lo amrinon. He is now being contradicted by witnesses. We know that there's always water located in our code. There's no moment in time when Narp code is dried up. So on the one hand, yeah, you know, let's believe it because he could have been a better liar. But on the other hand, what are you believing him? You're believing on something which is against an Anansad. And therefore the Gemara asks the following cash, in a case where a woman says, lone it face, the lone it macy, we have an Anansadi that if she was taken captive, then she was violated. So although she has a migu, she could have said, I went into this private place, this hiding place, and I avoided being taken captive. But once she admits that she was taken captive, then we have to assume by virtue of an ansadi, because that's a whole takana of shruya. Why is a shruya prohibited rabbinically to a kohen? Because of this ansadi that she'll be raped. And the Gemara rejects this. And we're at a, real, a really uh, critical turning point here where the Gemara is going to change its understanding of Shruya. Hachi hash hasam vada ika edim dika maya. We know for sure as if they were edim. The Gemara doesn't mean literally that they were witnesses, but it's as if we have witnesses that testify that the Nahar Pekod is full of water. It's overflowing with water. That's the river Nahar Pekod. And therefore, he cannot be believed with a migu to say, well, he could have take, said that he, he took it to uh, Narash. He admits he took it to Narp Code. And to say that there was no water in Narp Code is against David. But in the case where she says, 
Vare itmi? Question mark? No, he have to read it as a rhetorical question. Vare itmi? Can anybody say 100% sure, like an unsight? We know that there's water in our code, but do we know that a woman who was taken captive was raped? Ashachahu. Rabbanan suspected that she was raped, but it's a begetter suffolk. It's not begetter vada. There's no one on Sadiq. We're not definitely sure that she was raped. Ube makom chashosha amrinon, and here we have to add three words, mali l'shaken. When it's only a chashash, but it's not an on it's still begetter suffolk, then she would be believed with a mali l'shaken against the suffolk. Now the Gemara goes back to the mission. The Mishnah says in Yech Edim, we're talking about a woman who was cap who was taken captive, and there are test there's testimony to the fact that she was not touched. And who is who qualifies for such testimony? The Mishnah says, Afilu Eved, Afilu Shivcha Nemonim. Normally, an Eved or a Shivcha are disqualified for Avis. But in this case, because the Rabbanon wanted to be mekil in Shvuya, which is really just the next step based on what we just learned now, that it's only a of the Alma, so they were mekil, and they relied on what would normally be flimsy evidence that's not reliable. However, the question is, whose shivcha are we talking about? Is it the shivcha of the Shvuya herself? Or is it the shivcha of let's say a Kohen who is either married to this woman who was taken captive or maybe wants to marry this woman. So the Mishnah doesn't qualify. It says a filu shivcha. And an unqualified statement means just that, that it's not qualified. And therefore the Gemara says a filu shivcha dida, dida means hers, mehemna. And now we're going to see in a minute that with regard to a woman's shivcha, there's a special relationship, call it a, uh, a friendship, between a woman and her shivcha. And that's going to be proven in a second. And once having proven that, the Gemara is going to assume that you can't trust a shivcha who's testifying in a way that protects the interest of her master, uh, of, of her of the mistress. How do I know that the halacha postulates a certain kind of a, you know, or a, a reciprocal, you know, you work for me and I work for you relationship between between the balas hashivcha and the shivcha, riminu. And now we're going to learn a little bit based on a gemara gitmun gimel ein gimel about the laws of yichud. Now, how did the laws of Yichud creep in to the sugi on Ayin Gimel in Gittin? We're talking about a man who is getting close to the end of his life. And he gives a get to his wife with a tnai that the get should be chal shah achas lefnei mosu, one hour before my death. So we wait till he dies. And when he dies at that moment, we go retroactively to one hour earlier. And that's when the get is chal. However, there's a psul, a disqualification of a get called get yosha, which sounds like an old get. But what does it mean? It means that if a man gives a get to his wife, and before the get is chal, let's say he sent it with a shliach, or he made it tonight, that'll be chal with, you know, 30 days down the line, et cetera, et cetera. And within that period of time, he has a relationship with his wife. That's mavato the get. And in the case of a get yashan, even if he only has yichud with his wife, he's alone with his wife in a private place, we don't, we're going to assume that he may have had an intimacy with her in that private place, which would be Mavato the get 
and the get would be possible as a get yosh. However, here's where the laws of Yichud come. Under what circumstances do we have privacy? If there's someone else in the room and she, the wife, who received this get that's going to be held later on retroactively, she would be embarrassed to have a relationship in the presence of that person. You might call it in English a chaperone. Then we could assume that she did not have intimacy and the get is still valid. However, there's one woman who, even if she's present, would not serve to embarrass this married woman from having a relationship. And that's called the Shivcha. And the Mishnah says in Gibbon that Lotus Yached Ima, after he gave her the get, he should make sure not to be alone with his wife. Ella Alpi Edim, unless he's alone with her, she's alone with him in the presence of witnesses. And one witness is enough because that's going to inhibit her from having a, a relationship in front of that person. Afilu alpi eved alpi shivcha. Now, if I understand correctly, what's happening is that there are two people in the room besides the husband and the wife. One of those two people is either an Evid or a Shivcha. So we really want, in an ideal sense, two witnesses. And if, heaven forbid, they had that relationship, the witnesses would testify to that effect. Or alternatively, they'll testify that they did not have this relationship. But we're going to be make you, and we're going to allow for one of those two witnesses to be an Evid or a Shivcha. Chutz, who is excluded from being that chaperone? Shivcha Sa, her own Shivcha, right? The married woman's own Shivcha. Why? Mipnecha Liba, Liba, Gas, Bishivcha. Now, the phrase Libo Gas is indicative of a friendship. As I said before, I work for you, you work for me. You know, we're rooting for each other, we're in cahoots. That's called libo gaspa. And as a result of the relationship between a woman and her shivcha of libo gaspa, she, the woman, is not embarrassed in the presence of her own shivcha to have a be'ila relationship. So therefore, in that scenario, where a married woman is alone with her husband in the presence of her shivcha, we have to assume and suspect the possibility that she had a be'ila relationship with her husband. And therefore, in a sense, that be'ila is like almost like a new marriage, meaning the get that was delivered before that intimacy is invalid, and now it's like they started a new marriage all over the, all over again. And they would need a new get, and if he died, then she's an Almada, but she's not a Grusha. Now, in my Gemara, and this is where I, I, I got a little bit stuck, but let me try, try to explain to you where I had my, my issues. He says, and this is based on Rashi, that at the moment that they had a relationship, they're definitely considered married with each other. Now, people know that he gave her a get. He gave her the get before this relationship, again with the Tanai, the Rubichal, Shoach, Haslifnei, Mosa. But in the eyes of the spectator, Yomru, they will say, get mishas nisino, that the get was already validated at the time of the nisino. And therefore, if she had a relationship with him after the nisino saget, and the people think that the get is valid, 
they're not up on all the tenoyim that he made, that it'll be only one hour before his death. The child that she might have from this relationship is going to be considered in the eyes of the spectators, e'ilu nolad mipanui haba ala pnuya below kiddush. So again, I don't know how all this happens in terms of, you know, the rumors and, you know, there are no cameras here. And I don't know, I don't know exactly how to construct this, but what happens is that if at time T1, he gave a get to his wife with all the conditions that we mentioned, at time T2, he had an intimacy with his wife. People will believe that the get was already at time T1 a child that would be born from that intimacy that took place at time T2, again, the child would be born nine months later, but that child is considered to be, again, I don't have a, the accurate term for it, I'm going to call it a pagum, a, an, a child that was born out of, out of wedlock. So to read it inside, he says, we're afraid of the following takol. Yomru Shuchal Kvar Mishas Nesino, that the get was Chal from time T1. The Imi Voled Ben Mibiazu, if they had an intimacy after the get, time T2, and a child will be born, Yomru Olaf, they're going to say about this child, Shenolad Mimena, that she, the child was conceived by a beer that took place li achar shachal get if the get was already chal. They don't know about all these, you know, post uh, condition uh, time conditions. Fi afal pisha be'emes lo chal get bosa sha el li achar zman she ba leo dahinu shach as kodem misasa. So in truth, according to Allah, the get was not chal. They were fully married. Nimza. The get is going to call, cause a g'nai to the ben, to the child that's born. Again, as we said earlier, So therefore, what we're going to require is that if a husband has yichud, with his wife after he gave the get, even though the get hasn't been chal yet, that's going to make the get into a get yachon, and he's going to have to write a new get after the yichud. In any event, we see clearly that a woman's shivcha is not suspect of blabbing about an intimacy that she saw her, her mistress in, uh, involved in. she rather cover up for her mistress. And even if we interrogate her, she will deny that she saw the intimacy because she's working on behalf of the married woman in this case. And she realizes that if she would go ahead and reveal the story that she actually saw, that's going to undermine what we call liba gas chasa, that, you know, cahoots relationship that we spoke about earlier. And therefore, a woman will not be inhibited to have a, a sexual escapade with her husband in the presence of her own shivka. And therefore the Gemara asks, now we'll swing back to the Kasha on our Mishnah, how could her shivka be believed to testify that her gvirta, gvirta means her uh, mistress, I hope I have the right English word, um, went ahead and was tahora during the captivity period. She obviously is going to uh, cover up for any part and not reveal anything that might work to the detriment of Gvirta. Omar of Papi, Bishvuya Hikilu. Not only were they make you 
to rely on the testimony of a shivcha, but they will rely on the testimony of her own shivcha because we don't have clear evidence that during the period of captivity, she had a be'iwa and she was nitmes. It was only a chashash and it was created by the Rabbanon and the same Rabbanon who are machmir on a shivcha, prohibiting her to marry a Kohen, were mekil in the case where the shivcha testifies about her own virta that she was tahora and she was not violated. So that's Rav Papi. Now we get to Rav Papa. Ha b'shivcha dida, ha b'shivcha diday. Wait a second. When the Gemara says in Gittim that a shivcha is liba gaspa, and therefore the uh, the yichud, even in the presence of her shivcha, would open our, where would uh, cause us to suspect that she had beer with her husband in that Yichud situation. That's a case of Shivcha Dida, the Shivcha of the, of the Yich Atzma. Ha, huh? but that which we saw that a Shivcha is believed to say that Gvirta lo nitmes during the time of Shvui of her captivity, the Shivcha Dida. It's a shivcha of the Baal. So now we're talking about a situation of a married woman who never was taken captive. And there's only a shivcha, who's again, generally speaking, is disqualified for testimony, who can testify about her, this married woman, that she wasn't violated. And since it's not her shivcha, Rather, his shivcha. His shivcha is not suspect of working on her behalf to testify that she's tahora. And therefore, she's like any eight echad who's believed to testify that the shvuya was low nitmes. In the words of the commentary here, he says, Ein lach shoch, we're not going to suspect Shema to shakir lahoi litovas ishto shel adoneha. Okay, it's not, it's not her gvirta, but rather adonai. The Gemara asks, shivcha dida lo mehemna. Let's go back to our Mishnah. And let's be the dike in the Mishnah. The Mishnah says, Kokotani, ein adam meyed al atzmo. She's not believed, if she was taken captive, to testify about herself that she wasn't raped. The implication is, anyone else would be believed to testify in her behalf. Even ha shivcha didamem, even if it's her own shivcha, she would believe to testify that virta tahora. And the Gemara says, no, that's an incorrect view. That's not the way you read the Mishnah properly. Shivcha sa nami ke atzma domi. When it says, eno dem al atzmo, atzmo is coming to exclude Others, but not to exclude her own shivcha, because her own shivcha is ka'atzma dami. She's, in a sense, like an extension of herself in terms of edus, and she has an inyan, she has a vested interest in testifying on behalf of Virta that she's tahora, and she's allowed to go back to her husband. Now the Gemara gives another answer, the name of Rav Ashi, to reconcile what seems to be an apparent contradiction in the Mishnah is, and even though a shivcha of Gvirta would not normally tell and reveal that her Gveret had a beer, nevertheless, she wouldn't go as far as testifying Sheker. That far she wouldn't go even within the context of Liba Gaspa. Rav Ashi Omar, not like Rav Papa. Both Mishnahis are talking about her own shivcha. However, if the shivcha sees that her gvirta had 
such a uh, a bi'ila, right? Let's say in the case of a shvuya, then she would not tell it to anyone. She's got a loyalty to her gvira. But on the other hand, hasam dishti hasa mati rasa lo mehemne bahach dishti hasa usrasa mehemne. We're not afraid that she would go as far as to perjure herself in court and testify in a sheker. And now we can compare the two cases. We have the, the case of the get. And we're going to suspect that in the yichud between the husband and the wife, they had an act of intimacy. Because in this case, the shivcha has to say, says nothing. Right? She says nothing. She's not going to lie. She'll just be quiet. She'll be silent. And normally we say that if a man who gave a get to his wife would have yichud with his wife after the get in the presence of a shivcha, then we assume that she was inhibited and she wouldn't have had a be'i, well, it's not yichud, and the get is kosher. So unless we have testimony to prove that he had a relationship with her, we assume he did not have a relationship because there's the inhibiting factor of the chaperone, as we call it. And therefore, it's very convenient for the shivcha, if it's shivcha dida, to protect the interest of, of her gvirta, because all she has to do is say nothing. And will be matir and rely on the get as a valid get in the absence of any testimony that there was be'ila, because in the presence of someone else, we assume that they're inhibited. But Hacha, in this case, you're asking her to say a lie that she won't do. Shtikaso Sarta, in the present condition of a Shvuya, the assumption is that she was violated. Now we need Edus to testify, taking her out of the Chazaka situation, that she was not Nitme, she, was, she remained Tahora. So now you're going to require of this Shivcha, who Shivcha Dida and Libo Gaspa, to testify that I know that they didn't touch her. And we're not afraid, we don't suspect that she'd be caught in the context of the relationship of Libo Gaspa, that she would go ahead, the Kumva say, and purge herself and lie in front of the Bezdin and say, she's Tahor, and that they didn't touch her. So Gemara asks the following Kash. Hashtanami. Asya umeshaku. Why do you go so far and you say that a shivcha dida would not fabricate the truth? In the case of a shvuya, we should go a step further and logically, we should be choshesh that this shivcha will actually lie and fabricate a story in order to protect the interest of Gvirta. She's going to actually lie and testify lo nitma. She loves her Gvirta so much, and she's you know, afraid in her presence to do anything that might be interpreted as you have to be broken up from your husband. So the Gemara says, Tarti lo of This is already... A, a double strike, two strikes against you. Why? If she would, if the shivcha would testify, shelo nitma, it's not enough that she has to be silent, but she also has to get up and do a sheker. The Gemara says 
that for her to testify that her, her Gvirta did not have a beer, she was a nitmase, that's called Tarti. It's, it's like a two-stage process. Number one, she has to be silent, as if to say, well, there was no tumor. But that's not enough. Because in, the, in, in her silence, in the absence of any evidence to the contrary, we're going to assume that she was nitma, because every we were afraid that she was nitma. Now you want to say that she's going to go a step further. Not only is she going to be silent, but she's even going to testify, well, no nitma. She's going to fabricate the truth. And the Gemara now is going to try to bring an analogy that proves that a person who has somebody else's best, best interest in mind would go as far as being shoseg and saying nothing, but would not go a step further, that's the parity that we spoke about, and actively fabricate the truth. Ki mari bar isik, the Amri law, others say it was Chana, Chana bar Isik. Now these, whatever the name is, whether it's Mori, I have a cousin named Mori, or it's Chana, they're both the son of Isik. So Isik, which I think is a bastardization of the name Yitzchak, I'm not sure. Anyway, Isik comes forward. Now, Isaac ended up in a place called Bechoza. And he's together with a child, a katan. And Rashi points out here that he kiru biyoso yelled katan, although when he was a child they recognized him, but later on when the child matured they couldn't recognize him anymore. So they weren't sure exactly whether he was a, an heir. Had he spelled it H E I R? Is that correct? Right, whether he was an heir to be Yorish, his father's Nechos. Now the father dies. And this youngster, who is now a little bit older and more mature, he testifies that I'm one of your brothers. And therefore I get a share in the Yerusha. Amale, lo glibenich se diaba. I want half the estate. Amalei lo yadanala. We don't recognize you. Well, maybe we knew there was another brother that was born, but we don't recognize you. Who are you? To be a man from the street, imposter, that you're pres presenting yourself as a brother in order to get to Yerusha. Bring aid in, therefore, that you are a brother. The question came in front of Chizda. And Mori was, or whether it was Mori or, or Chana, had rejected this youngster and said, you know, you don't have a right to the Arusha. Amalaser of Chizda says to that anonymous brother, we don't know his name, Shapir Kamala, Mori is right. They don't recognize you. You have to prove that you are the Ben Katan that went with his father to a place called Kuza many years ago. And I'm going to prove it from you from the case of the Ache Yosef who came down to Mitzrayim. So you see that it's very common that a youngster, a brother, leaves the presence of his brothers and years and years go by, and the brothers don't recognize him. As it says, Vehem lo hikiru. Malami chiyotzeb lo chasim v'sakhen, ubaba chasim v'sakhen. So he matures over the course of time, he grew a beard, and so forth and so on. And that's why they don't recognize him. Amalei, 
So if Chizda says that Brazil, I see Sadi Dachua, the burden of proof is on you to, in, to uh, subpoena two witnesses that you're a brother. Omale, so this anonymous, faceless brother says to have Chizda, Isli Sahadi, I actually have witnesses. But, who Mr. Finu Mine, they're afraid of testifying in front of Mori, the Gavra Alamahu. He's a really tough guy. It's called an Adam Olin. He's like a mafioso guy. Adam don't want to get involved. This is so typical, right? Where the witnesses rather not get involved. So at that point, Rav Chizda accepted the argument. Omalei, Rav Chizda says, Ludite, he turns to Mori. Zil asinu at the lava You have the burden of proof to bring Edim that this guy is not your brother. If you won't bring Edim, he will take a portion of the estate. Omalei, so Mori says to Rav Chizda, Dina Hachi. Could the law be so? He wants to establish his rights to inherit and take me out of my chazaka. The burden of proof is on him. This is the way I judge you and all of your friends who are alimim kimocha, who are tough people that instill fear on others. Because indeed, the witnesses here are afraid to come in to testify because of you. So now the Gemara concludes its proof, having quoted this case, this story of the Psak, the Psak of Rav Chizda. Now, how could Rav Chizda tell Murray that he has to bring Aiden that this guy is not a brother? The second pair of Aiden will also be afraid to testify. In other words, just like your alimus, Mori, will inhibit those who want to testify on behalf of the anonymous brother, Hashtanami Asu Meshachre. Why don't we say that if Mori approaches two people and says, hey, I need you to testify that this guy is not my brother, they'll be so afraid of Mori because he's such a powerful guy that they'll fabricate the truth, perjure themselves in Bezdin, and testify that this guy is not the brother. And the more answers, we have no choice but to assume that Rav Chizda is based on Tarti Lo Avdi. That even if a person wants to work on behalf of his buddy, right, it means that he will not testify one way or the other, but he would not get up and perjure himself and lie in front of Bezdin. So I'll read to you the translation here. He says, Af Odom, even if these Adam are afraid, they're inhibited by this powerful Mori. But Eno Osi Laso Chteavos, Gam Milimona, with an iron. Right, number one, they're not going to come forward and testify the truth. They know that this guy is a brother. But for Gam to go a step further because of their friendship, not friendship, but their fear of Murray, that far they wouldn't. And the same thing therefore applies to Shifra in our case, that she might be Shosekes. And she say, so she'll say nothing. I don't know if my Gvirta had a relationship and was raped or wasn't raped, but she will not lie and fabricate the truth and say, I know she wasn't touched. That far, we don't go. So we have all these different answers that the Gemara offers to reconcile the stira between our Mishnah here and the Mishnah in Gitin about the status of a shivcha, shivcha dida. 
And in a case of a city that was taken over by the cargo, by these, you know, these devious captors, whether the shivcha of this each is believed or not believed to testify back virta, shalonivala, lonivala lagoy, according to our puppy, shvuyahikil. And we will rely on the testimony of her shivcha. According to Ravashi, and Mishnah is talking about Shivchas Isha, and therefore she's believed. But according to her papa, he holds that the Shivcha of the Isha is not believed. Shall we assume that this machlokas in her papi and her papa is machlokas tanoi? And we learned in a brisa, Zo edus ish ve Isha, Tinok ve Tinokes, Avia ve Ima, so to testify about a shvuya that she was a hora and nobody touched her and she wasn't violated and therefore she's tahora not tmeya, we can rely on the testimony of a man and even a woman, even a tinok or a tinokes, a young child. Male or female, or via ima, even her own father, her own mother, her brother or her sister. However, we will not rely on her children to testify that she was not violated, nor will rely on her evid or her shift. Which daf are you on? We are on Chavzayin Omid Beis. Chavzayin. Yeah, Chavzayin Omid Beis. Okay, so that's one Bryce. So one Bryce that says clearly supporting Rav Papa that Shivchas Ha'icha ain't an eminence. But Vitanya Yidduch, we have another Bryce. Ha'kol ne'amonim l'ha'id chutz mi he'mena u'bailo. Anyone is believed to testify in the Shvuya that she's Tahora, even her own child, her own son, her own daughter, even her own Eved or her own Shivcha. The only one who's excluded is she herself cannot testify about herself that she was not violated, that she's Tahora. And that clearly is a Brisa that supports the position of Rav Papi and Rav Ashi. The more clarifies. There are puppy who there are Ashi Tanoi. There's no question in our minds that there are puppy and Ravashi are going to have to admit that their Shita is dependent upon these two Tanoi, that they will be supported by the first Brysa, as a, I'm sorry, by the second Brysa, Hakol Memonim, as opposed to the first Brysa, which says, Lo Avdo Vishivchos. However, a Papa, who's of the opinion that a Shivcha is not believed, to testify about Gvirta Shalom Nitma, me Lema to Tanoihi, would Rav Papa have to agree and admit that his Shita really could only be defended by and supported by the first price, but the second price admittedly is against Rav Papa. And the Gemara says, no, Amalukh Rav Papa, Ki Tanyahi, Bime Sikhalafi Tuma. Rav Papa could argue that both Brysos support his position that he, our Shivcha is not believed to testify on behalf of Gevirta that she's Torah. And therefore, we understand very well the first Brysa and the second Brysa, which says, Hakol Nemanim Lahayid, which means even Shivcha, that's a case of Mesichal Afituma. She didn't come in to testify, she wasn't subpoenaed to stand in front of Bezdin and testify, I know that there was no violation of this woman and she became Tamea. No, she was telling us a story. And as she was telling the story, she mentioned that uh, this woman, Mike Virta, was Tahora, they didn't, they didn't violate. Kiha, the Gemara now gives an example of this. Omar, 
Rav Dimi came from from Eretz Yisrael to Bavel, and he tells us the following story. Rav Hanan Kartigna, I guess he came from a city called Kritigi. Mishtoi. Mishtoi means he told us the following story. Rabbi Shubin Levi was telling the story about us about something that happened in front of Rebbe. And what was exactly the story? Telling a story. And this was the story that he told. And my mother were taken captive. And I was with her the entire time. mine. Except for a moment that I went out to get some water and draw water from the well. But Daiti Al Imi. I was still somehow, you know, like looking behind me to make sure that no one came near my mother to have a, an active tumor. And little like it ate him. Sometimes I went out to cut wood. So, you know, this reminds me of the Jews in the camps and so forth. And I was still watching Daiti al Im. <laughs> In other words, I can testify about my mother that she was not violated. Visia Rebbe Lakun al And Rebbe, based on the testimony of her own son, allowed her to marry a Kohen. And why? Because the son was telling a story, Mesiach Lefituma. He, would not, he was not subpoenaed into Bezdin and interrogated as a witness. He offered a story, and either Bezdin heard the story or witnesses heard the story, and they brought it to the attention of Bezdin, and we could rely on that story. And now we get to the Mishnah here on the bottom of Daf of Zion, Omid Beis. We said, Ein Adam Neman Al Atma. Omar Rab Zechariah ben Akatsov. Now, this Rab Zechariah was a Kohen, and he was alive at the time of the second Khurban. And the enemies took over Yushalayim, and he declared, Hama'on Hazeh. Hama'on Hazeh is a language of a Shvua. And Hama'on refers to God who's Shochein Shrinoso Al Beis Hamigdash, which is the Mon of Hashem. I take an oath by the name of God, Lo Zaza Yada Mitoch Yadi. From the moment that the enemies came in to Yushalayim and took over and destroyed the city, taking the women captive and raping them. My wife was with me at all times. I accompanied her every moment. But the Chacham said, Your wife has the din of a Shruya. There's nothing we can do about it. Because just like she would not be believed the testimony about herself that she was low in its face, he is considered Ishto Kigufo, like her, and he's not Nemon. So we have no testimony. And the women were taken captive. Mar says, Toto, we learned in the Braisa, the Afal Piche, even though the Chachamim prohibited Rabbi Zachary ben Akatsov to resume his relationship with his wife. Nevertheless, they didn't. It, go a step further to prohibit him from living in the same chatzer as his wife. But yichet lo bayis b'chatzero, he was allowed to designate a house or room in the chatzer. And to make sure that they would never be alone together. 
we could rely on him that even though they're living in the same chaser, they would never be in total privacy together. And therefore, when she would exit through the chaser, out the Sarabin, where Rabbi Zechariah was, that's Rabbi Zechariah was in the chaser, Yotza Barosh Panel. She was very mocked that she would go in front of her children so that they would never be yichud with her and her husband, even though they're living in the same chatzah. And when she came back into the chatzah, her children would go first. So when she went out of her house into the chatzah, her children would lead the way so that by the time she got out to the chutz, there was no possibility of yichud with her husband. When she came back, the children would, would, would first come into the chutz and she would follow suit and there was no yichud. Bay Abai. Abai raises the following suffolk. A Kohen divorced his wife and obviously he's not allowed to have a relationship with her. And even if he'd want to remarry her, he can't do so because she's a Grusha and she's a Surla Kohen. Mao Lasos Pegrusha came. Are we going to allow his divorced wife to live in the same Chatzah that he has? And we're not afraid that they'll have some sort of a, an escapade together simply because they live so close to each other. And this was a by suffer. Can we recreate what we saw in the mission of Rabbi Zacharia with a man and his divorced wife? So here are the two studim that Abai vacillates, but Hassam in our Mishnah, when they were Mati Rabbi Zacharia ben Hakotza to live in the same Chotza as his wife. That's the Bishri Aikil. As we learned earlier on this staff, the Chashash that she was raped during her captivity is only a suffix. So they were Mekil Achamim. They were the ones who created the Isra Shvuya, and they were Mekil, and they were allowing them to live in the same Chot. Avalhacha, but here in the case of a Grusha, her Isra on her husband, who's a Kohen, is an Isra Doraisa. Lo, shall we say the Rabbana are not going to be Mekil, and he's not allowed to live in the same Chatzah as the Grusha, because he's a Kohen, and if, heaven forbid, it leads to an escapade, then he's violated the Easter of Kohen the Grusha. What shall we say? Abai is, is wondering that we're not afraid that because she's in the same Chatzah, and whether or not it's the case of a Div uh, a divorcee, right, a grusha, or a case of a shvuya, we're, we're not going to be afraid that they'll have an intimacy. Toshma, the Gemara says, we could be poshet this suffix from a brisa. The Sanya Magarish is ishto. A man divorces his wife. She gets, goes ahead and gets married to someone else. Lo tinase bishkunase. She's not allowed to marry a husband who lives in the same chatzar as her ex-husband. Because maybe since the two husbands, the ex and the present husband, right, they know each other and they're living in the same chatzar, it might lead to some sort of an avail. And on the top of Chavches Hamid Aleph, which is where I had planned to start today, but got stuck on the previous one. If her husband, her first husband, was a Kohen, now he divorced her, and she becomes a Surah Olav Midoraisa, is then Lotavo Lotadur Imo Bimavui. Right, since they know each other, they were married to each other, now she's divorced, they should not be living in the same mavuri, which is even a larger area than a chatzer. 
However, that are, they're allowed to live, he in one mavui and his ex-wife in another mavui. V'imhoya kfar katan. Apparently, kfar katan is such a small village that people see each other all the time. And Zelia Maisa, there actually was a case of a Grucha of a Kohen, and they lived in the same small town. The Amr and the Chacham declared, it's like they're living in the same area, and therefore they're not allowed to live together in that Kfar. So the Gemara clarifies, me nidcha mipnei me. Right? One of them wants to live in that place. Who gets rights to live in that place? Who has to pack his bags or her bags, leave the kfar in order to avoid this isra? Tashma desanya, he nidcha is mipano, vein hu nidcha mipano, vein vaisa chatsa shalah, hu nidcha mipano. As a general rule, she has to pack out and find itself another town, another village. But in the case of the Chatzar, which she owns the Chatzar, we're not going to undermine her rights to use her own Chatzar. A Baal would have to pack out and find himself another Chatzar. Okay, so this leads us to Ibailahu, which Amir Tzashem will pick up tomorrow at 8 at eight. So this week I'll be teaching only the Dafyomi Shir. And uh, I'll thank you for coming. Wish you wish you a great day.